Uh, I'm Chad Oakes, uh, executive producer and uh, co-chairman of Nomadic Pictures with Mike, who's the studio and financer of Van Mike Frislov, executive producer. Um, so I guess so we've seen so many vampire movies and TV shows. Can you talk a little bit about how this is different from what we've seen before? Well, I think the most interesting thing about Van Helsing is that, I mean, you know, uh, female action leads is a normal thing these days, but within her blood, Vanessa's blood, she's able to um, potentially be the answers for for vampires walking in the daylight or help humanity defeat vampirism. So she's she's got something within her that's interesting. And so she can bite a vampire and turn it human. So I think I haven't seen that before. So I haven't either. I would I was, say that's differentiating. I was really surprised when I when they said that then. That's pretty cool. The the reversal of that. We kind of give away the whole pilot now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> is that maybe you can answer this? Is that something that the original Van Helsing character could be like her ancestor? I suppose, or is, no. is she like related to the legend or all? Or is she just like a whole new character? There's storylines that will develop that that will address that. So I think it's a little premature to talk about that. So was it a con like? One of the things I've really noticed on sci-fi is that they've, I don't know if it's been a conscious choice or just something that's happened over time, but they've really become a channel that has a lot of um, strong female-driven shows and shows that have a lot of strong female characters. 12 Monkeys, My Nota Herb, um, Dark Matter, Killjoys, all of these have real strong female characters on them, and now Ben Helsing is going to be yet another one of them. So is there a conscious choice to have Ben Helsing be a woman as opposed to the original Van Helsing who was a man? And, you know, uh, or you know, how did that come about? That, that was the idea and the concept right from the from the get go, and that was that would be a female lead in a male action kick ass series. And um, and, I, and I, it's funny that you pick up on that because it wasn't until we were into it that I saw like Herb and saw these other shows, and and I and I do think that's coming from Chris Regina, which is on uh, the acquisition side of Sci Fi out of New York, not Los Angeles. Um, that that it just so happens that. A lot of these these new series or the series that are on right now, uh, um, I, I, I think that's a conscious decision, and I think it's a great decision as well too. Much like when we were casting, you know, it wasn't just hey, can you you know look at diversity? Can you not? Can you please try to you know have certain characters or directors or writers being female or or of a, a, a different descent? You know what? It was basically let's hire the best people possible, the best actors possible. The best writers possible, but also keeping that, which Mike and I have always done for the last 21 years, is make an effort to uh, not just equality, but find the best people, but also to dive into certain characters that could be from uh, you know an African American, or we say in Canada, uh, African Canadian, um, <laughs> good, actually, um, or 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 this character would be great as Muhammad, but he's a he's, he's, he's black. He's not he's not from the Middle East. So it's 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 our way of having fun and, and, and spreading love around. My wife's seen the pilot, and and uh, Vanessa's a mother and she's looking for her daughter. There's a real emotional underpinning there that's really strong all through the series. So, it's, I don't know, it, it's, a, it's a really attractive dramatic element. It really works well. It really works for a character too. So it's, we're not just, you know, doing a female action here. Well, she's a mother. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is really good. That's that kind of is a bit like um, the Terminator show. Yeah. yeah. That was the Sarah Connor. Yeah, Leah Hedy was the one. Yeah, Sarah Connor. Excellent show, yeah. And so, uh, with the Van Helsing, we're bringing in kind of a lot of other lore. There's also the Drac you know, Dracula is tied in with Van Helsing, obviously. And there are a lot of other properties that, you know, potentially could be used within Van Helsing. Because he also, there are also stories where he's hunted other creatures, like werewolves and things like that, in the past. Are we going to kind of potentially see something like that? Have you thought, I know it's very early on, but could we expand into other things besides vampires? Or is this kind of a to try to say? I would say potentially. Um, again, 
thought of trying to give away what season one is all about. Um, but I think we, we stick with the vampire genre of this first season. Um, there is some some vampire lore that could be related to that great great granddaughter of Dr. Van Helsing. So um, it, it'll, it'll all weave itself in there. There's a lot. There's there's a science underpinning to what we're doing as well. So it's not, you know there's a there's a fictional narrative thing that goes back to the original character, but there's a lot of science underpinning in what we're doing as well. I mean, it is, it's not it's not coming out of nowhere. The whole thing with blood and what it can do and all that stuff has been you know, talked about scientifically in a writer way, but. Definitely thought about it. About the vampires. So the ones that we saw on the show looked very kind of monstery with like the kind of bloodshot eyes and a little bit messed up face. So do they have like a physical, like a vampire face that changes? Because if you watch like Buffy or some of the other shows, like when you like vampires have like a mutation in their like physical presentation, is that gonna be the case on the show? No, they're 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 creatures that just need to feed. So there's there's not a mythological transformation that happens like a werewolf or anything. They're just hungry. They, you know, literally are been vampires. Very few of them have been living kind of in the shadows and trying not to be noticed by human beings, you know, in crack houses and shadowy places, just trying to survive without attracting attention to themselves. There's older vampires that have been around for hundreds of years, but, you know, they're dying. They, like Neil said in the panel, they, there's a lifespan. And then there's recently turned vampires, and then there's the ones that are feeding on animals and stuff, and they, they we call them ferals, and they're, they're almost like wild animals. So they don't really transform, they're just hungry. And in our world of vampirism, um, and maybe Neil and Simon are better to, to give you the quote, but there's, there's different, there's a hierarchy of vampires. All right, switch! Like Paul right, Johansson, like Paul Johansson, you know, the, the Dimitri character, and then there's like, and then there's like soldiers, and then there's ferals, and there's like, like sewer vampires. So it's like a whole world of hierarchy. There's a lot to play with, then. Yeah, it's great. Thank you.